Senator Markey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. Um, Mr. Chairman, President Kennedy was right when he once said of the shores of the Atlantic Ocean that all of us have in our veins the exact same percentage of salt in our blood that exists in the ocean, and therefore we have salt in our blood, in our sweat, and in our tears. We are tied to the ocean, and when we go back to the sea, whether it is to sail or to watch it, we are going back from whence we came. The Atlantic Ocean, Mr. Chairman, is a natural wonder. President Kennedy is correct, and it is also an economic engine supporting hundreds of thousands of jobs in key industries such as fishing and tourism. Fishing off of the East Coast states produces roughly $1.75 billion in direct value for those states and more than $4 billion in total economic activity each year. Tourism on the East Coast draws visitors to our beaches and our coastlines. It generates hundreds of billions of dollars in additional economic activity and supports an estimated 800,000 jobs. Marine debris, which can range from larger items like plastic bags, water bottles, or other pieces of trash to microscopic plastic particles is a threat to this vital oceanic wonder and also to the industries in New England and other East Coast states that have sustained families in their employment for generations. Uh, during the International Coastal Cleanup Days in the fall of 2016, 2,500 volunteers in Massachusetts collected over 13,000 pounds of marine debris on 164 miles of Massachusetts beaches and waterways. But this is a tiny amount compared to the estimated 8 million metric tons of plastic that makes its way into the ocean each year. Ms. Wallace, how can this massive amount of marine deb de uh, debris harm not only our marine life and environment, but also industries like the fishing industry of Massachusetts? Marine debris can have a big economic impact both on uh, from a tourism standpoint, but also from a fishing standpoint. So one of the things that NOAA did uh, a few years ago was do a comprehensive study at looking at the economic impacts of derelict crab pots in Chesapeake Bay. We found that if you remove targeted areas where there's a lot of traps that accumulate all at once, you can actually have an impact of 38 million pounds of crab harvest, which equates to $33 million. That's annually. We have done similar work in Massachusetts with the lobster fishery. So we've worked with the Department of Marine Fisheries to look at how many lobster are actually caught in lost fishing gear, and it's substantial. So I think looking at how we can look to prevent derelict fishing gear from being lost, but a lot of times you really can't prevent it. So if we know where there's areas that we can actually remove to have that biggest impact is what we want to do because these are really big numbers. Thank you. Yeah. So what are the impacts of marine debris on fish stocks? Does it impact their ability to reproduce? Does it make them more susceptible to disease or other environmental stress? Uh, how else does it harm that fishing stock? Well, fishing gear is extremely efficient at catching fish or crabs or lobster. And when it's lost, it will continue to do so for years. We found even in Massachusetts where lobster pots can continue to, to fish um, for, for decades. And so what we want to be able to do is minimize that because that's a huge, huge uh, natural resource impact and also an economic impact to the fishermen. So the, the, uh, the New England Aquarium has been participating in a campaign called In Our Hands, which is encouraging the public to choose alternatives over single-use plastic. Would more organically-based plastics help reduce marine debris, and how can we take this model to encourage using less single-use plastic on a larger scale? I think materials that are made of natural items obviously will degrade quickly in, in an environment. And so that's something we should look at. Um, biodegradable plastics can be a little bit of a misnomer because they may not fully ever degrade in ocean conditions. And we don't want to give people the license to be able to toss that product if they think it's biodegradable into the ocean. So I think we have to be careful about looking for alternative materials is certainly something that will be important to solving the problem. OK, great. And uh, as the ranking member on the Senate Foreign Relations Subcommittee on Near Eastern and South and Central Asian Affairs. I'm curious, Mr. Bolton, on your work in East Asia. Yeah. Your testimony discusses the State Department's efforts mm -hmm. to work with rapidly developing Asian economies to reduce marine debris, especially 
microplastics, international cooperation, especially with developing economies in Asia, is essential to reducing the amount of waste in our ocean. How does marine debris from Asia impact our environment and industries here in the United States? Um, mostly because the trash that is dumped in the ocean there or makes its way, way into the ocean there arrives on our shores in Hawaii, Alaska, the West Coast. Uh, but we have found some venues uh, in which to engage with the Asian uh, producers of marine debris. I was talking earlier in the hearing about our efforts to use the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum uh, to uh, uh, strengthen waste management um, capabilities in these Asian states. We're trying to support Indonesia, which has uh, articulated a goal of reducing its marine debris by marine pollution by 70 percent by 2025. Um, we Can have, I just ask you on that yes. issue of Indonesia's goal of reducing it by 70 percent by yes. 2025, what is the role the State Department is playing, our government playing in helping the Indonesian government to accomplish that goal? We're trying to connect people in Indonesia with the experts in the United States who know about this. For example, we sponsored Dr. Jambak from the University of Georgia, one of our leading experts, to go to Indonesia to work with the officials there and to raise awareness of this problem. So we, are, we see ourselves as a facilitator of these types of activities. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Mr. Ranking Member, thank you so much for holding this very important hearing. I just think it spotlights something that is critical for us to deal with on a bipartisan basis. Thank you. Great. Thank you, sir.